How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medical student and my laundry load just finished. So if you're hearing a jingle in the background, that's why. But today we're going to be talking a little bit about reflecting on what it means to me to be in the field of medicine because I think it's changed a lot since I started medical school. So I've been in medical school for the past four years of my life and five years ago I was a lot more of an optimistic person. I was also transitioning into a new phase of my life where I was starting to become really independent. So it was a phase of my life where I was super, super happy because I started getting my own apartment. I started living independently. I had control over my life and I was going into a field that to me was my calling, uh, a calling that I've always had as, as a kid, which is to help people and to save lives. That's what I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. And then when I got to college, I had a really great experience with someone who told me that I would make a great doctor, and I decided to just pursue the field of medicine. And since I've been in this field for the last four-ish years of my life, a lot has changed and a lot of how I view the field of medicine and working in the field of medicine has changed. Because, you know, to the outside world, when you're not in it, when you're not in the hospital, when you're not in the clinics, when you're the patient, who has no idea what it's like to be in the field of medicine. You watch shows like Grey's Anatomy, The Resident, House, and just how society as a whole perceive doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals is always in a good light. It's about a huge sacrifice. You're making this huge sacrifice in your life to help people, and it's worth it in the end because, yes, you sleep less. Yes, you study a lot harder. Yes, you give up your 20s to you know, developing this craft in the art of medicine. But in the end, you participate in saving so many lives. But in the last year, I have started my third year clinical rotations at the hospital. I'm currently rotating through mostly at Grady Hospital, one of the biggest hospitals in the south of the United States. It's a level one trauma center too. So I've got to see a multitude of patients through the emergency room and in the hospital who are getting care. And in my first month, I realized that these rosy glasses that people outside of hospitals look at medical professionals are very, very rosy. I just remember after I finished my first two months working in the internal medicine department at the hospital that, you know, a lot of what medicine is is not actually saving lives. We have so, so few resources to help people who need help the most especially when you're at a huge city hospital where most of the people coming in either don't have insurance, they're experiencing homelessness, or they haven't been able to afford going to a doctor for the last couple of years, and that's why they're at the hospital. So what I saw within the last year is a lot of really, really sick people who had nowhere else to turn, and they got to a point where they couldn't help themselves anymore. So they took themselves or somebody else had to take them to the hospital for care. And at the, at the point that they are there, it's already too late for most of the patients that I've seen. The way I can illustrate what I saw and what frustrates me so much about the American medical system is imagine a fire hydrant. This fire hydrant has a hole in it and there's just water gushing out, gushing out everywhere, just spraying water out into the street. You would think that you need a giant plug or some something to stop that water stream. However, all you have are band-aids. And that's what medical professionals have in this country when we have very sick patients like that. All we can do is put band-aids on these giant gushing holes and that band-aid's not gonna last. So what I saw are a bunch of people who are so, so sick because they never got the opportunity to get the care, the preventative, the preventive care that they needed in their lives. So now they have these giant open holes and all we have are band-aids. I'm not going to lie by saying that I felt completely comfortable with that. I didn't feel comfortable with that at all. I honestly had a huge identity crisis in the beginning 
of August when I first started working at the hospital because I just felt like this is not this is not what I was signing up for. I wanted to make a positive impact on someone's life. And all I saw was that we were just there to do damage control. We weren't really helping anyone because the problem is structural and the problem is systemic. So the resources that we do have, yes, might you know prolong the course of someone's suffering, but it doesn't end the suffering, nor did it actually prevent it from happening. So I go on to say that I still do not regret going into the field of medicine. I still think there is hope in a lot of areas. And the reason why I personally do still want to go into hospital medicine is because I want to be someone who advocates for my patients regardless of all these setbacks that I see in the system. I remember one of my first patients, um, he told me that he was he was suffering from a pretty, pretty difficult condition. But he told me that every day he loved seeing me because I never I never wanted to bring bad news. And if there was bad news, I always try to tell him that we were going to go through this together and that we were going to work through it together and we're going to try to find solutions together. It might not fix what's happening to him, but I was there with him throughout the whole way. And that's what keeps me going now. I say all this to say that if you want to make these structural changes, you don't have to pursue medicine as a doctor. There are multiple other ways into this field that you can change systemically. And even doctors can change medicine systemically, but we have a long way to go and we have to work together to get there. And I'm making this video to say that if you are considering being a doctor or if you're considering somehow to be in healthcare administration is that you have the outlook of going into this field wanting to change it, wanting to change how it is currently because right now, the only people that benefit from medicine are those who do have insurance, those who have money, those who have those resources. But the large majority of people here, li people living in the United States, don't have those resources, especially people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds and people from marginalized intersectional, I intersectional identities. Someone like me, someone like my classmates who have had so much going against them and people like the people I grew up with. And they're the ones that need help the most. So what we should do is not just practice medicine. We need to advocate for our patients and that goes beyond treating them. It goes to advocating, it goes to making these structural changes and it goes to changing health policy to allow access for preventive medicine so that we see less patients at the hospital. We should not be seeing as many patients as we do in the hospital system here. We should be seeing them in the clinics. We should be scheduling their annual appointments. We should be following up on their labs. They should have equal access to getting their prescriptions. And that's how we save lives. And that's what I want to convey in this video because I, I struggled a lot and went through a, a bit of a depressive episode because I felt like I was doing nothing. I felt like all I was doing was damage control. Like I've said before, I wasn't making that difference that I wanted to make. And that's why I got so much into making videos like this and so much into the health advocacy work that I do because I felt like I was doing so much more there because you're listening to my video and I hope that one day if you do go into the field of medicine, you make those changes because I personally can't do it myself. We have to work through, through it together. And if you're not going into medicine, you're listening to this video and you're encouraging your policymakers, the people in your federal government, the people who hold office as you're holding them accountable to make healthcare accessible for everyone. I hope this video was informational for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you will follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism. And that's all I have to say in this video, but uh, please stay tuned for the future. Mwah. This has been.